My name is Richard Haynes, and these short videos are designed to help clarinet players of all levels. I'll introduce the fundamentals of a range of contemporary playing techniques in the hope that this knowledge will empower you to find your own solutions when called for. You probably already know various colour fingerings from making the notes in the throat register of the clarinet sound better. These fingerings slightly alter the presence of the natural overtones of the sound and can make these weaker pitches sound more rich. So if we take the example of throat G, throat G sharp, and throat A. If we use these fingerings without any additional fingers on the instrument, they sound like this. They don't sound bad, but depending on your playing level or the instrument you're using, perhaps these notes aren't the most resonant on the instrument. So with colour fingerings, we're trying to use more of the instrument. So with G, we can add the fingers of the right hand. The same with G sharp. And then with A, we can use fingers of the left and right hands. As you can hear, the pitch also comes down slightly. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase the resonance of the pitch, but also help it in terms of intonation. A lot of you probably already know fingerings like this, and these are essentially colour fingerings. They're the basis for timbre or colour trills, things that you'll often see in contemporary music for clarinet. Most often these trills will be notated with the trill abbreviation, TR, accompanied by an asterisk followed by the wavy trill line, or the abbreviation of the bispigliando and the wavy trill line. Sometimes the desired pitch will be repeated in a certain rhythm in the score, indicating the rhythm for the exchange between the two or maybe more colour fingerings. That can sound like this. So the main criteria for good timbre trills or colour fingerings is that they don't change the pitch of the main note by more than a 16th tone, or 12.5 cents. Have a look at your tuner. So in the middle you've got 0, and to the extreme on either side you've got minus 50 and plus 50. A 16th tone is about 12.5 cents, and it's just enough to make a difference in the sound, and arguably not enough to really be perceived as something microtonal. So if you're looking for colour or timbre fingerings, check on your tuner when you've found them and make sure that it's not going much further than 12.5 cents. So let's take the example of a throat A. I played this before. The best place to start looking can be a key or a tone hole that is relatively far away from the tone hole that's been opened by the principal fingering. Now for A, that's this key here, as you all know. If this key is employed, we're going to start our search at the other end of the instrument. Okay, there's not that much difference happening there. So we're going to move closer to the main tone hole that's been opened. So here we've got the ring keys of the right hand, and we can try each one of them in turn. The one that sounded the best to me was the one with the pointer finger of the right hand. Often finding timbre trills or colour fingerings can mean using a combination of keys. So in this case, we could employ all of these ring keys together to get a very, very nice A timbre trill. It's easy to trill. It's easy to trill fast. That can be really important. And it makes a significant difference to the color and the pitch of the note. So using this process, you'll eventually strike gold, but it can take some time to find. So prepare your scores before the first rehearsal. Also, quite often it will be the larger sized tone hole coverings that make the right amount of difference, as I said before, with the E and the F keys. F sharp and G in the clarion register. 
So you can hear that trilling the E and the F key in this register is really effective. It has a lot to do with the fact that we're in the second register of the instrument. So the pitches are a lot brighter, the overtones correspondingly even higher and more bright. And so the, uh, the change in the air column caused by the relatively large tone hole pads here at the lower end of the instrument means that there's a lot of change within the overtone spectrum. So if you're looking for tone, timbre trills or color trills in the clarion register, always think of these low note keys. If it's a low note, say E and F, and there are no more keys to trill, try trilling with the tongue on the reed. So that means apply the tongue gently to the flat side of the tip of the reed and move it back and forth. If this is the reed and this is the tongue, it's coming in and just kind of dabbing the reed very gently. It's not the cleanest sound in the world, I must admit, but it's one way of making something that's similar to a timbre trill in the low register of the instrument. If the principal note is a twelfth higher, say on a B or a C, try using the left pointer finger or the right hand side keys played by the right thumb. As you can hear, some of those trills were already quarter tone trills. That's not the goal, but sometimes, due to the clarinet's mechanics, we don't have that many options. I think the best trill for these two notes, on the B and the C, is using the right hand thumb on the third side key, on the right hand side here. It means that you have to take a lot of the weight of the instrument into your left hand, because the right hand thumb is no longer supporting the instrument but it's well worth it. If you're sitting down, if it's an ensemble piece, then you can rest the instrument on your right hand knee or leg and play it like this. Finally, if there are numbers in circles placed above reiterated pitches, this means that the composer wants a number of different coloristic possibilities on the one pitch. If this is the case, Choose only the simplest alternate fingerings, even those that are a bit further away in pitch from the main note. There are stacks of clarinet fingering charts out there, both printed and digital, so if you're having trouble, check one of those, or send me a message via my website, richardehaines.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos about the clarinet.